okay record labels why haven't you signed this bird yet i mean really especially considering some of the stuff i hear on the radio nowadays And welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, it's the end of the month, so it's time for my monthly playlist video where I just talk about the stuff that I've listened to over the past month, just for kicks. And uh, first of all, uh, a couple of what I like to call little liner notes, just miscellaneous thoughts and stuff about my channel or about music or about whatever uh, before I get into the actual playlist. Uh, first of all, though, I have to apologize for uh, my lack of content. I went online a few days ago and realized it's been uh, two weeks since I've uploaded anything, uh, including the last live stream that I did. I have been really fighting the uh, lack of motivation for filming lately. I, it's, you know, I don't have any shortage of stuff I want to talk about. It's just been the working up the motivation to actually get down in front of the camera, set the light up and all that good stuff, and uh, you know, focus myself enough to, to do that. So I guess apparently I just needed a little break. So I hope you didn't mind my taking a little break, but uh, I think I'm going to be getting back into the groove here, getting you some content. I hope to film multiple videos in the next day or so, so wish me luck. Uh, but yes, first of all, a couple of YouTube notes here uh, to start off my liner notes. Uh, I just found, and this was like literally just yesterday, uh, he's got I don't know how many thousands of subscribers, so you guys probably know about him already. Sometimes I'm just a little slow on the uptake. But uh, there's this guy named Bill McClintock, and he's got a YouTube channel. And he does these absolutely fantastic song mashups that, I mean, I, I've only watched three of them so far, but I cannot wait to. I mean, he's got dozens and dozens, and I don't know how he does it. I would love to be able to do stuff like that. Uh, I, I probably have the software to do it. I just wouldn't know uh, where to start or how to start. But yes, a few of the highlights that I've watched. Uh, James Hetfield and the News. Yes, he does a Metallica and Huey Lewis and the, and the News mashup between... Uh, Hip to be square, Huey Lewis and the News' is hit, and Metallica's hit, Enter Sandman. He calls it Hip to be the Sandman. It's a fantastic one. And the, the ones that I love the best are the ones that are the songs that he mashes up that are from two completely different genres. Like, uh, he does one by Spice Knot. Yes, a Spice Girls and Slipknot mashup. Uh, he calls it If You Want to Breathe My Sulfur which is a mashup of Spice Girls, Wannabe, and Slipknot Sulphur. That one is just stellar. I just absolutely love that one. And the last one I most recently watched was Cool and the Riot with Bang Your Head, It's a Celebration. That's probably self-explanatory. Cool and the Gang Celebration mashed up with Quiet Riot's Bang Your Head. I, the guy's a genius, I gotta say, and uh, I'm thinking of uh, assembling my favorites into, you know, downloading them and just stripping out the audio and just making myself a mix CD, which in it would be a mix CD in all uh, senses of the word with these mashups, but uh, I, I have yet to barely scratch the surface on his channel. He's probably got dozens more that I would just absolutely find amazing, but anyway. Another uh, YouTube shout-out. I have been watching this guy's channel for months, several months at least, and uh, his name is Chris Profi, Musically Obsessed. Great guy, and uh, I wanted to give him a special shout out, a special thank you, because I was in the mood to send him a little VCLT, which is, for those of you who might not know, those of you who are not part of the vinyl community, uh, Vinyl Community Love Train is what VCLT stands for. It's basically just a fancy term for uh, YouTubers sending each other music. You know, record, record, CDs, tapes, whatever. And uh, I had never done that with anyone before, except in my little circle of friends that I had made on YouTube when I first started. Uh, so, in a way, since it was our own little circle, we didn't, and we were all kind of low scale, small scale YouTubers, uh, I didn't consider that VCLT. But uh, yes, he is the first guy that, outside of my little circle, as I said, that I sent VCLT to just a couple of two CDs and a tape that I uh, didn't really have any use for that I thought he would enjoy. And he did. He featured the uh, uh, receiving the VCLT in a recent video uh, of his, and that bumped up my subscribers by about five or six. So thank you, Chris, for the shout out, and uh, I really appreciate it. And you know, my channel is growing at its own pace, I guess. I am not complaining about how slowly it's growing. I, I, I think I've said this before, I would appreciate slower scale growth, a, a slower build, than to just explode in popularity. Uh, but hey, those of you who have recently joined my channel, thanks to Chris Profi's uh, uh, shout out to me. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to have you here. I uh, hope you enjoy my content. So yes, Chris is just a great guy. He's got a great channel, a very, very 
informal, laid-back kind of attitude, kind of like I like to think my channel is. Uh, occasionally I have well-structured videos, but uh, <laughs> it's a rarity, I guess. But anyway, um, you know, so I, in, in a way, I think that he and I have that in common with our channels, just very kind of, you know, hey, how you doing, gonna talk about music here uh, sort of thing with uh, the way he does his channel and the way I do mine, I think. So thank you, Chris, for the shout out. Uh, hope you're doing well. I hope everybody out there is doing well. Major heat wave going on up here in Oregon right now. You've probably heard, uh, heard it all over the news. Today, uh, Sunday, is set to have a, an all-time record high temperature in the Eugene area. Probably most cities in Oregon will hit record, all-time record highs today. So uh, yeah, but yeah, there's no glo global warming, is there? Anyway, uh, yes, on to what this video is, is my monthly playlist video. This is where I just talk about the stuff that I've listened to over the past month. And this one is going to be a little bit different than other playlist videos. And I'll explain why. This is going to be a CDs only special edition. I'm going to talk about 10 CDs that I've listened to over the past month. And the reason I'm not doing LPs or cassettes right now is because as I assemble my playlist each month, you know, when the month begins, I tear off the old page and start the new page. I, I write stuff down on my list as I listen to it, obviously. And there's always stuff that I don't get to the previous month. And I, what I do with those is I just carry those forward onto the next month's list. And over the last couple of months, I have uh, listened to a lot more CDs than I've listened to tapes or uh, records. And so this is just kind of like uh, taking care of the buildup over the last couple of months, primarily from my uh, going to Portland a few weeks ago and picking up a whole bunch of CDs. So if you saw my Portland Hall video, you will see a couple of uh, CDs today that you saw in that video. So yes, uh, next month I plan to get back to the uh, full mixture of uh, audio formats in my playlist, LPs, cassettes, and CDs. But as I said, this month will be a CD special. So let's go ahead and get into the albums that I listened to over the past month. Starting off with a couple of mm, dance, pop, uh, electro rock kind of uh, things that I picked up in Portland. First one is a Swedish, I believe it is, group called The Ark. This is their album, State of the Ark. And I had heard about these guys months, or no, no, years and years ago from when I had a, a written blog and uh, had a couple of, you know, blogs, obviously, that I read regularly. And there was one guy who, for whom The Ark was one of his all-time favorite artists. So that's how I heard about The Ark. And they had this in the uh, bargain section at uh, Everyday Music up in Portland. Listen to it. It's actually very, very good. It's uh, If you like Swedish electro pop, uh, you'll like these guys. And I am drawing a blank right now as to who to compare them to. Uh, oh, The Killers and maybe a little bit of Panic at the Disco, possibly. But uh, yeah, a little bit more on the dance end of that kind of thing. And then, But then we have Men, Women, and Children. This is their self-titled album. And, but this is along the same lines as the arc, but a little bit more toward the rock. And so this is much more like uh, uh, Panic at the Disco, The Killers, that kind of thing. So very good stuff. And I believe this is on Spotify as well. as well. And I think the arc is on Spotify as well. So Now this next CD, we're actually going way back into the history of my channel, I guess you'd say. Uh, back to the first year of my bargain bag feature, which I believe was the second year of my channel. Uh, one of the CDs that I unearthed in one of the first round of bargain bags was by a group called Nuclear Valdez. And I, I rather liked and uh, enjoyed their sound, and they are all or mostly Latino musicians. I think all but one of the guys is Latino. And I really enjoyed that album, and so for months and months I had their first album. It was their sophomore album that I had in the bargain bag. I had their first album on my wish list, my shopping list. Didn't pick it up until just a couple months ago. It is called I Am I. And it's, uh, don't know if I like it as much as their sophomore album. I probably still just need to give it a little time to grow on me. And I'm sure I will enjoy it as much as I do their sophomore effort. But yeah, great rock music with just a little bit of a touch of Latin influence. So uh, yeah, good stuff. And then we're moving on to the uh, jazz and world music era for just a, a few minutes here. We have Edith Piaf. And you've probably at least heard of Edith, Edith Piaf. I have, I've known about her, you know, been aware of her existence for a long, long time. She is a French jazz singer, chanteuse, if you will, uh, active since, uh, or I think she's actually passed away now, but she started, I think, back in the 30s, 1930s or something. But uh, yeah, I had been aware of her, but never really had any desire to check out her music until a uh, commercial, I believe it was a car insurance commercial that came out uh, in the last couple of years. It's the one where the guy is driving around with the goldfish bowl on the roof of his car and he forgets that it's there and you hear this French song playing in the background. That is Edith Piaf singing uh, Non, je ne regrette rien, 
which is no, I regret nothing. That's the translation of the of the title. So, and you know, when I heard that and uh, I shazammed it and realized that that's her, I decided, okay, I guess I need to check out Edith Piaf, and uh, she is actually the singer, I believe, who originated the song uh, "La Vie en Rose." The first hit uh, hit version of the song was recorded by Edith Piaf, and that one is on here as well. This is uh, the very best of the voice of the sparrow. That was her nickname in French, in in France. So yeah bunch of great classic pop in there. Great American, well, great French songbook, I guess you'd say. It's, um, pretty much all the songs are in French on that. And then we're moving on to a mix of uh, American and Brazilian uh, music here. We have Sinatra and Jobim, the complete reprise recordings. Uh, yes, uh, Frank Sinatra and Antonio Carlos Jobim did, I believe, two albums together. And this CD collects all the tracks on both of those albums, plus I think a couple of uh, bonus tracks as well. So, yes, I had found this at a store up in Salem, Oregon a few months back. Uh, one of the few things, really, that I found worth buying there. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, it's great stuff to relax to in the evening. It's, yeah, great, great stuff. And, of course, you know, with the soft bossa nova beats of Jobim's music and Sinatra's velvety voice, how can you go wrong, really? So, yes, an excellent album. And then we're getting into oh, some folktronica, I guess you'd say, electronic folk music. Uh, Beth Orton, this is one of the CDs that I got up in Portland. Uh, and this is her sophomore album, Central Reservation. I like this one a little bit more than her debut. Uh, Trailer Park, I think it's called, I can't remember. But uh, yeah, this is very good stuff. If you like Dido or Gem or hmm, maybe Imogene Heap, Imogene Heap is a little bit more on the electronica side. But if you like, you know, those soft electronic kind of ambient beats with a nice smooth singing voice, uh, Beth Orton is right up your alley, right right up there with Dido and Jem. So yeah, very good stuff. And uh, I got, I think, four of her albums, and I still haven't listened to two of them. So I'm looking forward to checking her out more. And then we have an artist that, another one that I have known about for a long, long time, never checked her out until uh, I found this one in the $2 CD section at House of Records, locally in Eugene. Uh, Amy Mann, this is her debut album, uh, Whatever. So, and it's very, very good stuff. I, uh, yeah, uh, pop rock, basically, is, is uh, I don't know how I would classify it uh, beyond that. But yes, very enjoyable stuff. Uh, very, very good stuff. And she is the wife of Michael Penn. Yes, so who coincidentally, I and I think I might have gotten the bug in my ear to check out Amy Mann when I was looking up Michael Penn. I listened to his albums recently, looking him up on Wikipedia and realizing that they are husband and wife. I think that's what compelled me to check out Amy Mann. But yes, I like this one enough that I'm going to try and look for... Uh, I'm going on a trip soon uh, in about a month. Actually, I leave a month from today. I'm going on a little trip, so we'll have a chance to do some record store shopping, so I will keep an eye out for her sophomore album and possibly uh, additional ones while I'm out and about there, so, yeah. Good stuff. And then we have some comedic rock, I guess you'd say, a comedic country rock. Uh, Mojo Nixon and Skid Rober. This is their album, Bodacious. Now, I found out about these guys, I believe it was on, not on the Dr. Demento show, but rather on Al TV, which was a an annual segment that Weird Al Yankovic would do on MTV. He would take over the airwaves of MTV for a couple hours and play funny music videos or his favorite music videos and just clown around and be silly and be himself on Al TV. And uh, one of the first uh, exposures to Mojo Nixon and Skid Roper was their song Elvis is Everywhere, which is on this, uh, this CD here. They're interesting. They're unique, uh, interesting to listen to. I had had, I think, this one and their other album, Root Hog or Die, uh, on cassette a long, long time ago, got rid of them, and finally I picked up this one. I'm going to look for Root Hog or Die, which has the uh, their classic song, Debbie Gibson is Pregnant with My Two-Headed Love Child. And if you think I'm kidding, look it up. See, I told you. That's a real song. But yes, uh, so that those two songs and uh, others on here, uh, Positively Bodies Parking Lot, that's the name of another song that's on here. That gives you an idea of their very warped sense of humor. Uh, and with a little bit of, uh, I don't know if redneck is too harsh for it, but, you know, kind of, uh, just a little bit of a country vibe. So if if you crossed John Mellencamp with Weird Al Yankovic, you might end up with uh, something like these guys. And speaking of Mellencamp, this is his album, Uh-huh. I mentioned I had picked up some uh, Mellencamp albums. 
I liked his Greatest Hits collection enough that I wanted to explore his individual albums, so I picked up a small hunk of those uh, in recent weeks. And yes, this one has his uh, famous songs Pink Houses and Authority Song. Very, very good stuff. I have enjoyed it. I've listened to, what, three or four of his albums so far that I've uh, picked up recently, and I really enjoyed him. Uh, kind of uh, ashamed of myself that I did not explore uh, Mellencamp's individual studio albums more until just recently. I've been missing out on him all this time, so good stuff. And then finally in my playlist today is something from the 80s. Uh, well, Mellencamp obviously was from the 80s as well, but this is the debut self-titled album by The Dream Academy. Now these guys were a uh, kind of uh, soft, a little bit ambient, a little bit um, kind of that spacey, echoey their name kind of fits, the Dream Academy. Got a little bit of a dreamy sound to it. Uh, one of their biggest hits was Life in a Northern Town. That is on this album. And they also had a song called The Edge of Forever, which I think was, if I remember reading on uh, Wikipedia correctly, it was featured in Ferris Bueller, the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. So yes, uh, very, very good stuff. And I was uh, quite pleasantly surprised by this album because Life in a Northern Town was the only song of theirs that I uh, was familiar with. And, and I heard, when I heard The Edge of Forever, I, I remembered it from Ferris Bueller. So, but yes, excellent stuff. One of the lesser known and uh, unfortunately so bands from the 80s. So I, I would recommend checking out Dream Academy. If you, if you have a thing for 80s music, definitely give them a try. And so that'll do it for my playlist for the month of June 2021. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to hit that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.